Good evening, race fans, and welcome to tonight's broadcast here on the Elite Racing Network of the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series, the Virginia Road Course Challenge from the virtual Virginia Air National Raceway. I'm Zach Evans, alongside William White, Dave Huckleberry, as always, uh, producing the broadcast tonight. 31 laps around this road course, William. Once again, kind of like with Sebring a few weeks ago, not one we're used to seeing the NASCAR-style vehicles. That definitely a unique challenge for these drivers. Yeah, definitely. Virginia International Raceway, not a circuit that NASCAR visits in real life, and I don't know if it's one that Elite has visited in the past. Certainly hasn't while I've been here, but it's definitely a unique circuit. A lot of elevation changes, a lot of technical sections, but also a lot of long straights for these trucks to really let her eat with those high horsepower V8s that they've got in the front of those machines. So it will be interesting to see how this one plays out. Qualifying underway currently. About... Uh... A little more than halfway through the qualifying session. First, we will look, of course, at the point standings as they run going into tonight. Chase Cabry is a points leader. Gerald Campbell second. Jesse Racine is third. Raymond Hanneman fourth. Joe Francis rounding out the top five to this point in the season. Obviously, a, a good chance for a lot of these drivers to try and make up some points here tonight on the road course. Yeah, definitely we're going to see some road course specialists out there tonight. Maybe some guys that aren't quite as, you know, aren't quite as fast on the road course as they might struggle to secure the points that they need to get into the playoffs. And it's kind of crunch time now with just three races to go in the regular season before the playoffs start on May 5th at Chicago Land Speedway. So it's time to get into the top 14 for a lot of these drivers. You'll see them on the ticker on the left hand side in a few minutes time when qualifying is done and the race gets underway you'll see the guys in green are already locked in the guys in yellow are currently in the playoffs but aren't quite locked in yet and the guys in red are still in the hunt but are just outside the bubble at the minute looking high above the virginia air national raceway circuit a little more than three miles around 3.27 the listed distance for this 20 turn road course. Down into the final, oh, minute and a half of so, or so of qualifying. Right now, Tyler Fody, fastest time in the qualifying session, followed by Chase Cabri and Richie Hearn. Of course, Hearn made his Elite debut, or Elite Truck Series debut, I should say, last week at Slinger. Very different <laughs> from last week, <laughs> what we're doing tonight here at Virginia Air National Raceway. And probably something that's going to fit Richie's skill set just a little bit better than the quarter mile last week. Yeah, definitely. They're pretty much the two opposites on the schedule. Slinger and Virginia, obviously, it's quarter mile high bank double this one's a three and a half mile super technical road course and Richie Hearn seems to be doing quite well I'm um, obviously former real life IndyCar driver so I think he's definitely better on the road course side of things down into the final 30 seconds of this qualifying session still Tyler Fody remaining on top of the boards now we look in at Chase Cabry making his way onto the back straight here at Virginia International Raceway. Long, long, long back stretch. Longest straightaway on the circuit. He is not going to be able to finish that lap before time runs out, it looks like. Hey, we got it. And there is our starting lineup. Tyler Fody indeed holds on for pole position. Chase Cabry second. Cole Cabry will line up third with Richie Hearn starting fourth. Leighton Norgard fifth. Hunter Smith sixth. Chad Frankenfield seventh. Jesse Racemus will line up eighth. Seth Rawls on the inside of row five with Caleb Pecumer 
to his outside. Dylan Javier, 11th. Gerald Campbell, starting 12th. Yeah, looking at the rest of the grid, Gavin Hibbs in the 92 will start 13th. We'll have Jake Scarborough alongside him to have an all-shift eSports row 7. Joe Francis around up the top 15. In the 35, Michael Harsak in the 24 will start 16th. Jeff Green, NASCAR Bush Series champion from the year 2000 in the 38 will start 17th. We'll have Raymond Hanneman, Daytona winner, alongside him. And it's David Carpenter, Mitch Avere rounding out row 10. Andrew Rucker in the 64 and Dustin Dewar will be 21st and 22nd with Michael Klein in the 06 for Wally Racing. Alongside his teammate Sam Boutwell in the 47 and 24th. Everyone from here on back did not set a time during the qualifying session. Thomas Coonan, 25th. Matt Telder, another driver we saw for the first time last week, starting 26th. Cody McCorkle lining up 27th. Joshua Free, 28th. Jaden Racimus, 29th. And Andrew Hardcastle will start shotgun on the field in 30th. So here's the good news for us, William. You ready for the good news? I'm ready to hear it. We've efficiently unveiled our 30 car starting lineup. They haven't even left pit road for a full pace lap around this time. <laughs> yeah. So we are about to just watch some park. We could talk about the weather. We could talk about just about anything. Right now, we will look at the race format since Dave has put it on the screen. As you can see, 31 laps. There are no stage breaks in this event. There are two sets of tires waiting for drivers in the pits. I would imagine most of them will only use one of them. They'll pit at some point for fuel and tires. Some of them will split it halfway. Some of them will pit a little earlier. Some of them will run it dry and do the extreme overcut. But I, I don't see a two-stop being anyone's strategy going into this race. Yeah, definitely not. We saw a little bit of strategy variance in our other road course race earlier on in the season at Sebring. It was between the poles of uh, Tyler Foti and the 92 truck of Ethan Stanley. He wasn't featuring tonight. He is, uh, I don't believe, eligible for points in the truck series. He doesn't compete here full time anyway. He's up uh, kicking butt in the Cup and Xfinity series anyway, so he doesn't need to be down here. Um, but Tyler Foti starting on pole. I believe he started on pole at Sebring. He at least started second alongside his teammate Ethan Stanley. We saw Ethan Stanley try to pull an aggressive undercut on his teammate Tyler Foti, who kind of had the pace on him, did end up taking the checker flag on that particular occasion. But it is interesting to see how these different strategies play out on these road courses. As you can see, the field making its way uphill. This, this camera angle, I'll admit, doesn't quite do the elevation, the run up to right here in turn nine, this right-hander justice, and then down into turn 10, otherwise known as the south bend, where the pace car is making its way now with the field in tow. And you kind of have these two right-hand turns at the bottom of the hill, turns 11 and 12. Turn 12, famously known as Oak Tree, because there used to be an oak tree here. May Oak Tree rest in peace. <laughs> I think you mentioned it got blown away in a storm, didn't it? Or it just fell for some particular it, reason? It seriously fell. We've just never... Blame it on gravity. Well, that's usually why things fall. Yep. Uh, so here is that back stretch I was talking about when we were looking at uh, Chase Cabry's qualifying efforts ever so briefly. As you can see, it starts all the way back there. And really, they're probably... I mean, they're not even halfway through it at this point. You'll see, I'm sure another camera wants to field pass through. There you go. This is how much straightaway we still have left. Down the hill into turns 13, 14, and 15. Very tricky complex of corners. High speed left-hander, but you can't overshoot it because then you've got to get the vehicle to settle for this sharp right-hander that's also downhill. And then the left-hander turn 15. And Straight still the roller into the hog pen as well. So this is a very difficult set of corners to end the lap. Incredibly difficult. And also incredibly, if you're not familiar, just very difficult to see where you're going. It takes a lot of uh, track time to really learn that complex. And then finally, as you can see, pace car pulling on the pit road. That brings you back to the pit straight. We're about to go racing here in the Virginia Road Course Challenge. Green flag is out. 
Tyler Fody is leading the field down into turn number one. Oh, we've already oh, got trouble. Logan. I like Logan has gone flying off on the exit, exit stage right there for the 12 truck. I know if he has some contact from behind him. Doesn't look to have had much damage. He's got an entire state for runoff there on his left hand side. We'll see what happened on the replay. Tyler Foote gets a pretty decent jump ahead of Paul Cabri and after the Speed Factor guys, and he just loses it. Oh, Over man. the bumps, truck just steps out from underneath him. Hunter Smith, Chad Frankenfield just narrowly avoiding that one, and that is not a good start for a Leighton Norgard. Started fifth, but already huge trouble. Fortunately, 31 laps to dig himself out of it, but not the way you want to start the evening if you're a Leighton Norgard. As we look back up front, Tyler Fody leading the way, making his way towards turns nine or actually he might he's already at oak tree excuse me i'm gonna learn these camera angles eventually tonight the, the track itself i'm fairly familiar with i just have to learn what we're looking at here on the screen which is half the battle yeah virginia's a tricky one for drivers and casters alike they go down up down then they're gonna go back up later on down this straight as they head towards the roller coaster complex see tyler Foley hard on the brakes there for that left kink and he's got the downhill right, then the downhill left that ends the roller coaster complex there with that little double left. He's going to go back down the hill. He's going to find a little trough again before he enters the hog pen. He's got the two Cabries with Chase leading Cole there. They come out of the final corner, end of lap number one. It's Tyler Foti, one second ahead of Chase Cabri in the lead. You know, it, it's a little bit of a first world problem for us uh, broadcasters, but it's a very legitimate uh, challenge, especially for the guys in this stock car based series that don't get a lot of road course experience, because so much of it looks the same. It's a lot of grass runoff, it's a lot of trees. It can be really challenging to even find a marker to use. Forget, remember to look for it every time you're approaching a corner when you're learning this three plus mile road course. Yeah, um, one of the things with road courses, one of the first things you learn is your braking references for each particular corner. You need to find something to look for, whether it's a little brake marker board or a little divot or a little brake in the road that splits off into maybe a different configuration. So we're seeing a replay here on the street limit, guys. Gets into the back of David Carpenter through turns two oh. and three. A couple of trucks involved there. Not I ideal believe there for Hanneman or Carpenter. I believe that was Thomas Coonan that got wrapped up in that, so that would have been another street limit truck. Replay here. Looks like Hanneman spots a gap, very quickly closes there on the inside of the 71. And yeah, it is Thomas Coonan. And someone just splits them all beautifully. It looked like maybe Michael Klein that was. Near the back of the background, the top 20. But that is big, big damage. And positions lost there for the 71 and the 85. Still working lap two here. Tyler Foti opening up the advantage on Chase Cabry and Cole Cabry. Making his way down the pit straight to start lap number three. We'll the gap to... looks to have stabilized about a second for Tyler Foti, maybe growing just a little bit through the braking zones. He seems to have got those markers down, but Cabri looks to be getting the advantage of the exits. You see him eking a couple of tenths away from Tyler Foti on corner exits. So there seems to be a fairly even battle out of the front between these two. It's uh, going to be a challenge, as it always is in this vehicle on the road courses, to keep the rear tires underneath you especially in these low speed corners uh, with the elevation changes it's very easy to just apply a little bit too much throttle at any point and then really upset the rear tires and have to fight that for the rest of the run as we can see race control deeming no action on the incident between raymond hanneman and dave carpenter yeah unfortunate between those two a little hanneman just went for a gap that was looking to close on the inside of 71 so no action from race control we're looking at jesse racimus coming under a little bit of pressure from the 57 of dylan haver he's riding 
um, in the late normal motorsport stable, Jesse Racimus, one of three drivers already locked in. As I mentioned, it's those guys in green. Chase Cabry in second place, Jesse Racimus in eighth, and Gerald Campbell, you see in the back of your camera shot there, in 11th. They are all already locked in on points into the postseason playoffs. So they're not going to be too worried about their result tonight. While they do want to carry some good momentum into the playoffs, no amount of bad luck or destroyed race trucks are going to stop them from getting into the playoffs. I think Richie Hearn might be closing in ever so slightly on Cole Cabry here. We'll get a look at those uh, lap times this time by... Let's see, Cole Cabri. Yeah, so Richie is closing the gap ever so slightly. Yeah, it seems to be taking a bit of a tighter line there through turns one and two. The horseshoe, as it's affectionately known, Cole Cabri just in front of Richie Hearn. The gap closed by about two tenths of a second last time around, so now about half a second between these two as they go through turns four and five, and I think 5A this last one of the complex is called they come out into the little slithery snake section one of the most technical parts of the track got to take it as straight as you can to keep your momentum up get a good exit and then down into the second part of the little slithery snake bit of a downhill then an uphill so you have to really work hard to keep the rear tires under you keep that momentum up now you've got a fair long straight to cool your tires just a little bit but then again you're doing some more pretty high speed corners so the tires are going to be taking a beating tonight And if it takes any amount of time for Richie Hearn to set up a pass here on Cole Cabry, we see Chad Frankenfield lurking in the background as well. We know he's always a threat on the road courses here in Elite. Uh, he's going to be eager to insert himself into that conversation if he gets the opportunity. Yeah, Chad Frankenfield, one of the most oh. aggressive drivers in Elite. You see, he takes a big send there into the roller coaster there, locks the right front. That's not going to be helping his case at all as he just falls back a little bit off the fight between Cole Cabry and Richie Hearn. We see Cabry with a little bit of a mistake there coming out of the hog pen now. Richie Hearn right on the back bumper of Cole Cabry. Cabry gets a little bit of a better exit and will have the slipstream coming into turn one, the horseshoe. But I mean, these are massive trucks, they're not exactly Formula One cars. So, unless you go for a big dive bomb. I don't think you're going to get much off the straight. You see, Han did take a little look to the inside of the 98, but the door remains shut for the time being. So, lap five, it's still Foti and the two Cabries leading the way in first, second, and third as they started. Looking back, of course, already Chad starting to close back in after that lunge at, back at the roller coaster on the last lap, but. I, I definitely has the short run speed, but especially after that move, I have to wonder how much he's going to pay for it later in the run. I mean, definitely, I think, you know, road courses and, you know, these types of configurations tend to be quite harsh on the rear tires and not so much on the front tires. So I think if it's just that one tiny lock up into the roller coaster, sure, it's going to hurt his pace and he's not going to get those few tenths of a second back, but. I don't think it will change the feel of that truck all too much. Maybe he might fight some oversteer through the centre of the corner, but that will be about it. As he's still right with Richie Hummel right on board with the 15 now. They have a road course specialist. He sees Cole Cabry and Richie Hearn in his windshield. He has Hunter Smith, his teammate at Little Legal Racing, just behind him. So he's got a little bit of pressure to deal with himself. Heads into the roller coaster does close up to Hearn but doesn't quite lock the right front this time does close the gap just a little bit so Chad has the pace he just needs to get the move done I believe I don't know if you're gonna ha if you'll have an angle of this uh Dave I believe we had another incident involving David Carpenter unfortunately and there <laughs> well there's the race control ruling no action we'll take a look at it here on the replay, Dave Carpenter trying to get around Sam Boutwell in the 47 going into the horseshoe and looks like just a case of the brakes locking up for Carpenter. Yeah, I think David definitely had the right to look inside there of the 47 of Sam Boutwell there. He took the lunge and he almost made it stick, but the right front just locked up for him and he went 
slamming into the side of the 47 of Sam Batwell there. So half spun the 71, the 47 continues on. See a lady Norgard trying to charge back up the field after a mistake. Pretty much at the drop of the green flag, dropped it on the start already from 30th back up into 18th. So it's quick progression back up the field for a lady Norgard who's trying to right the wrongs of his earlier error. Definitely some exciting racing on track here so far. Looking now, we've got a side-by-side -side here. That's Sam Boutwell, Jaden Racimus working his way by. Dave Carpenter going to take another shot at this pass. Couldn't quite make it happen there, but I have a feeling Sam Boutwell's going to try to facilitate that to the best of his ability at the next opportunity might be after these couple of corners wants to get on the snake not really sure not a lot of extra breathing room on this on this tight and twisty road course even when you're trying to let a guy by yeah it's really difficult to overtake on what is quite a narrow track and you know especially for these massive trucks you know while they might look tiny on the cameras when you're barreling through a corner at 110, 120 miles an hour, you take up a lot of that space pretty quickly and it makes it very hard uh, for trucks behind you to try and facilitate an overtake. As you see, we're focusing on Jaden Racimus and Sam Battle. They're currently occupying P24 and P25. They come through the oak tree section now. The easiest way to facilitate a pass is onto one of these long streets. You want to get a good exit out of a low speed corner such as oak tree. And try and get alongside another good opportunity is into turn one coming out of the hog pen. I see that is the fight for 11th and 12th. That's Gerald Campbell and Gavin Hibbs. Those two forwards trying to have a little bit of a battle there. Gerald Campbell already locked into the path, so we'll see how risky he wants to get in his defense of P11. Gavin Hibbs also quite good on the road course side of things in that number 92, trying to get the position. Gavin Hips with the little Wood Brothers throwback. A little bit different one. Normally you see the Wood Brothers through throwback and it's the 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 usual I guess motorcraft colors, but here you've got kind of the, the late nineties, early two thousands circa like Elliot Sadler look going on. Yeah, definitely an awesome paint job there from Gavin Hips. We know is quite the creative guy. I've got Gavin Hibbs there on the quarter panel of that beautiful number 92 Ford there. He makes all his own paints and I think makes some uh, for a few of the shifty sports guys. We know him and Seth Rawls are definitely the creative minds in that particular organisation. He's also to be, looks to be one of the fast guys as he's right on the back of a former Cup Series champion, Gerald Campbell, who is no slouch on ovals or road courses. We saw Gerald Campbell get third at Sebring in our last road course outing. He's not quite as high up the leaderboard on this particular occasion but 11th is still respectable but Gavin Hibbs trying to take it away from him they go down the hill Gavin Hibbs doesn't look for a move into the roller coaster this particular time but he might be looking for a move maybe into the horseshoe just riding on board now as you go into the hog pen see so gonna go down a big drop here in elevation for that fast right Hibbs tries to get the run and he looks to get a decent one does get a little snap of oversteer the double zero gets a decent run off. We'll see if the 92 looks for a move. You know, speaking of Gerald Campbell, of course, the Sebring race was effectively a home race for him. It's a place he's even raced in the real world. It's right there in his home state of Florida. Virginia, not so much. And from hearing a couple of things he had to say going into the race, he definitely didn't love this track as much as Sebring. I think that's putting it mildly. So... No, probably not a surprise to see him just outside the top 10 compared to his Sebring performance, but still one of the better road course drivers here in Elite. Yeah, it's definitely a bit of a road course ringer. And, you know, Virginia is quite a polarizing track. Its technicality and the way it drives is certainly a big attractor and repellent um, of all kinds of drivers. It's one of those tracks you either love or you hate it. It's a bit like Marmite. You know, you either love it or you hate it. And, Gerald Campbell might not be loving it, but he's doing all right. He's in 11th place. He's got Kevin Hibbs putting on the pressure in P12. But Gerald Campbell's holding on nicely there to that 11th spot. Not many mistakes at the double zero. I'm sorry, it's a bit like what? Marmite. Do you know what that is? Oh, is that just an English thing? I... I nope. Have you heard of Vegemite? I, I have heard of Vegemite. 
that's the Australian version of Marmite. Um, yeah, it's something you put. It's just like Vegemite. You put it on toast or whatever, and you either love it or you hate it. What's I it personally made despise it. Um, oof, I honestly I <laughs> don't know. Is it meat? I is it not... vegetable? Is it fruit? Google says con- concentrated yeast extract. Oh so yeah, that's delicious. It doesn't. Right off yeah, the tree. Yeah, doesn't sound nice, and it isn't nice. I've had it. It's not good. That's why they say English food sucks. It's true. I, if I for one have welcomed this educational experience. Yeah, there you go. See, that's why you got an English guy in the commentary booth. I, I teach you things. A hundred percent. Um, Dave, I believe we had an incident. I saw Thomas Coonan involved in it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to find it. Let's see here. So this is going up the hill. I believe that's heading towards turns nine and ten. That is contact with Matt Telder. Oh no, that's actually eleven and twelve. Excuse me. I keep. I am determined to see. That's the worst part about losing the oak tree. If I could see the oak tree, <laughs> that's eleven and twelve. I have determined to mess that up at every opportunity tonight. But as you can see, there was contact racing incident. The ruling from race control, and now we're seeing another replay here. I believe that is Mitch Havir. It is going for a little itty bitty slide. No half spin, small oopsie, no harm. Justin, is, Justin Dewar. Dewar. is this another oopsie? I think this is going to be a very similar oopsie. Oh, not quite the same spot. Just oh, yeah, before. Spin. No harm, no foul. Small oopsie. Pretend it never happened. Oh, you, you can actually see just in front was a bit severe. They did it at the, almost the same time. Must have been a wind. Wind gust. We'll, we'll save yeah. that. Fight for the Lees, bro, and though, all of a sudden. Chase Cabry's right on the back of Tyler Foti coming out of the hog pen here. Just three tenths now between those two. We saw the gap extend to over a second at one point, but now just 23 laps to go. Look at the gap. Four tenths, tenth and a half, four tenths, four tenths again. And now another tenth of a second taken out of that lead that Tyler Foti had. He had to go a bit defensive into the horseshoe there. And Chase Cabry's going to try and take the tight line. We'll see how all well that works from the gap still stabilizing about four tenths of a second so chase cabry's putting the pressure on definitely piling on the pressure as we get just a little bit closer to the halfway mark of this race still probably five laps or so shy of it this battle for the lead brewing tyler Fody in the 40 chase cabry in the 39 making their way out of the snake, up the hill. I think we might have just seen a tiny, tiny error. Yeah. Out of Chase Cabry. You see the interval there now, two and a half seconds. I think he might have just dropped it a little bit. Coming out of the left hook section of the track, coming onto the snake, and then a little bit of a long straight there. So the gap now, two and a half seconds, just gives Tyler Footy a little bit of breathing room as he comes through a tree down onto the long back straight before the roller coaster. You see there, Matt Telder. And Michael Harsak having a little scrap there for position as it's 18th and 19th for those two in the 29 and the 24. Coming through the left hook section, Telder just in front, but Harsak applying the pressure, trying to get past that 29, who was involved in an incident not too long ago with the 07 of Thomas Coonan, but he managed to get away from that one relatively unharmed, but Telder and Harsak still on the track doing well. Matt Telder, of course, now with his actual number for the series, at number 29. We had a slight discrepancy last week. It had two number 12s on the track, but now Matt Telder proudly bearing that 29. He'll carry for the rest of the season here in the Stay 2 Sports Truck Series after he does a little lawn maintenance there on his way up the hill. Yeah, a bit of a heart in mouth moment there for the 4D Raceway driver. Just getting a little bit squirrely there, gets a little bit squirrely again. Off of the oak tree section, Harsak tries to follow in the slipstream. I don't know if he's quite close enough to look for a move into the roller coaster section. He's going to be close, but I don't know if he wants to make that lunge. It's a bit risky. It's only 10 laps into the show, and it's for 18th and 19th. I think he wants to buy this time a little bit, try and get him when the overtake is a little bit easier. See, Harsak definitely has the pace to keep with him. He just has to try and facilitate it now. That was about the worst place on the track Telder could have 
had a miscue because if you you lose that momentum out of oak tree then you're going to lose it the entire run down the back stretch but like you said michael hasek ex ex or uh, just exhibiting a little bit of patience there understanding the situation is oh a little bit of a lock up there he's gone off the track so he's got to save it but it will cost him the position matt telder michael hasek moving up the leaderboard with that yeah i think the patience has just paid off there for michael hasek waited for a mistake out of the 29 of matt telder and he gets a position basically for free there so michael hasek neatly up into p18 see a little lock up there from gerald campbell he's still defending 11th hard from the 92 of Gavin Hibbs, who's getting hungry up by the lap. See Caleb Pakuma there guarding the last position in the top 10 there in the 59. He's currently in the playoffs. Gavin Hibbs, part timer, not running for any points. Joe Campbell already locked in. So these two, not really with much to lose or much to gain. So it'll be interesting to see how they play this one out. We'll see if either of them have to pace to catch. Caleb Pakuma's Hibbs is all over the back. Of the double zero coming through the hog pen now, just off the roller coaster. We'll see if the 92 backs up his entry this time, tries to get the run onto the start finish straight. He's coming through turn 17A now. Hibbs in the slipstream, but he's about two tenths of a second off, so he'll gain a tiny bit, but I'm not sure if he's quite there. Watching this battle unfold, I flash back a little bit to the Elite Grand National Series race at Zandvoort earlier this season and how difficult it has been to pass on some of these more unique road courses and as a result how important the undercut was for guys as far as a tool for passing competitors. How early do you think we'll see the first guy come down pit road? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, on these road courses, you know, You'll typically see people just pick the halfway point um, in the interest of tyre conservation. I don't know how hard the um, track is being on tyres. I imagine the tyres have taken a bit of a beating with how technical and undulating Virginia Raceway is. So we might see a undercut maybe in the next couple of laps. We're just 20 to go, so it's about lap 11 for all these guys of 31. So maybe the next one, two, three laps we'll see some guys, maybe like Gavin Hibbs, who's maybe being held up a bit by the double zero of Gerald Campbell. Go for a bit of an undercut maneuver to try and get ahead of the double zero. Maybe we'll see Chase Cabry, who is now just six tenths off of Tyler Foti. So while we haven't been looking, that gap has closed dramatically. Half a second between the Ford and the Chevrolet. So Cabry definitely has the pace there over Tyler Foti. At this particular stage of the running, we'll see if Chase Cabry elects to come down pit road and look for an undercut. As you see, two seconds the difference, so maybe a mistake out of Tyler Foti. But nevertheless, Chase Cabry's now right back onto the rear bumper of the 40. Cole Cabry has indeed come down pit road. It looks like a couple of the lap trucks behind him, Michael Klein and Sam Boutwell also. Cole Cabry's fastest lap was a 153.6. His last lap, since he didn't make it to his start finish line here for this one, I don't believe, a 155.1. So you're looking at that's about, I guess, a second and a half that he's looking to pick up here if he can get some clean track. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got a massive pace advantage over Tyler Foti and Chase Cabry, who are now probably going to be having a little scrap soon enough. Chase Cabry definitely being slowed down a little bit by the 40. Is. Cabry's right on the back of Tyler here. Through the uphill, through the south bend, we go now into Oak Tree. So this could be a critical corner for Chase Cabry. See if he gets the run. On Tyler Foti, the 39, looks to get a decent exit, and he does. You see the gap in the top lefty screen coming down all the time. I don't think he's going to be quite able to get a move done into the roller coaster section, but the battle definitely heating up. We might see some strategy involved here. There's the gap now under two tenths of a second. Almost okay, we just backs off knowing that he can't quite get the move done on this particular occasion, but he's really applying the pressure. And I think we might see some pit stops from these two in the next lap or two. Try and get that critical undercut. You could definitely see them starting to slip and slide as we're going to the Mark Rebelis replay machine here. Looks like Jaden Racimus oh. just steps out on him going down the hill. 
an oopsie again. But he's okay. He's got the entire state of Virginia from runoff, as we said during practice, so he'll be okay. I think Dustin and might have had another oopsie. Uh, another little lazy spin there for the Do Good Motorsports number 32 Chevrolet. He's drifting through the corner, he got bored, it's okay. We'll let him have his fun. But now through the left hook section, Foti and Cabri electing to stay out for the time being. So they still run first and second, but Cabri really trying to put on the pressure wherever he can. Maybe trying to psych Tyler Foti into a mistake as they head through the snake now. Tyler Foti just eking out a little bit of a gap. Got a good run into this straight section of the track. Half a second between the pairs. They head through the second snake section before they get to turn 10, the south bend. Then 11 and 12 will be Oak Tree coming up momentarily. So again, we'll see. Oh, Cabri with a big gap there. I think he's made another mistake. We've just seen some guys come out of the pits. I think we might have just seen another mistake there at the 39. He's now got the lapsed car of Jaden Racine, which is currently 26th. The first car lap down just ahead of him. I don't know if we can get a replay of that one. See why the gap has won so much. So it looks like it's right around either turn 9 or 10 as we were rewinding there. That's... He literally just slowed down a lot. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he has some sort of game freeze and he just wanted to hit the brakes just in case he... Just to not straight line the corner. Just right. to be safe. Maybe. Well, now he is on pit road. Yeah, I think definitely trying to get the undercut while he still can. He was still within about a couple of seconds of Tyler Foti, so he definitely can still reap the rewards of the undercut. But if I'm Tyler Foti and I'm seeing Chase Cabri on pit road, I'm buying pit in as soon as I can. Next time by, just, you know, you have to react to that. Obviously, you're just going to be bleeding time to your rivals and have an extra lap of fresher tyres, try and stay ahead by any means necessary because we know how hard it is to overtake here in Virginia. So track position, absolutely paramount if you want to take the checker flag tonight. So Tyler Foote looking to sweep the road courses here in the State Dream Sports Truck Series in 2024A. But Chase Cable is not making it easy for him. And then I'm playing a bit of a strategy game. We'll see how Foote responds. Hunter... Smith has made his way up to the second position around Richie Hearn. It's about eight tenths between those two. I wonder if maybe they've had a little bit of a, a battle earlier on. We saw Hearn ahead of Hunter Smith a little while ago. See Jeff Green just getting a service there from his pit crew and his do good motorsports number 38 there. So he'll be one of the next cars to pit Hunter Smith. And Richie Hearn just coming over the crest into the roller coaster section we go. It's the left right, it's the left again. One of the most technical parts of the racetrack. It takes a lot of driver skill to get through this bit, especially with how blind it is. As you see a tally for the 07, that's Thomas Coonan. A lap 14 off track causing severe damage. That's the first tally issued of the night from race control. Hunter Smith elects to stay out. Richie Hearn, though, comes to pit road from third place in the 73. Richie Hearn, the next to pull into the pits. We go to the replay to see the incident involving Thomas Coonan that did incur that tally from race control. So he's gone off track. Is this going to be a bad rejoin? Um, but to be a fair and safe rejoin, just squeaked in ahead of the double zero of Joel Campbell. Yeah. Might be another oopsie later on. The spot high speed track, so severe damage could be just to his own truck. He might just have a big off here. Coming up the hill. Oh, he's all kinds of out of shape coming up the hill. 
got Matt Taylor just in front of him. Doesn't run him over. Oh. No. Maybe it's up the roller coaster. A bit of a hot spot for mistakes that could really end in tears, so we'll have to see as they fly up the hill here. Super speed, it's almost blind there. See Gerald Campbell really closing in. Campbell goes for the move there. To the left. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh. Yep, that's that'll do that'll it. That'll do it. Youch. That's unfortunate for the 07 and 29 the double zero who got caught up in that as well. I think Thomas Coon has got a bit psyched out seeing that seeing Gerald Campbell go for a move as Tyler Foti, race leader into pit road. Hunter Smith follows him in second place. And that's Chad Frankenfield coming over the hill. No, that's Jaden Racine as Chad Frankenfield continues on, as does fourth place Seth Rawls. So the 15 and the 10 will inherit the top two positions on the racetrack as they cross the stripe. 15 laps to go, so we've reached the halfway point here in Alton, Virginia for the Virginia Road Course Challenge. And we're 15 to go. It's the 15 leading, but we're still part of the way through the pit stop cycle these two in front yet to pit it looks like chase cabry has gotten out in front of tyler Fody with that strategy call now the challenge will be can he stay in front of him with those older tires but more than two seconds clear of tyler Fody at the moment yeah chase cabry now needs to maybe try and save his stuff while he still can he's got a lot of breathing room between himself and tyler Fody. two seconds between those two drivers, you see the 40 there just in the background. So Chase Cabry gets the undercut done beautifully despite some mishaps there throughout those last half a dozen laps or so for the driver 39. So now you see the gap still coming down quite a bit, 1.6 now. So those fresher tyres really working to the advantage of Tyler Foti. He's pushing hard on his outlap, trying to get to the 39 as quickly as he can. So this battle is nowhere near done. Oh, we've got lots of issues. I believe Gerald Campbell might have gotten tangled up in another one here. We look at Michael Klein. So Carpenter almost goes off in front of him. Klein does go off, loops it in the grass. They're off track behind oh, him. He's oh. trying to turn around, just barely nicks Gerald Campbell. That was, I don't know if we've got an oil down in that corner or what, but everybody was going off there. Yeah, quite myself saw Carpenter go off. Klein goes off kind of in sympathy. Carpenter saves it. See Campbell with a massive lock up there. Hossack goes off though completely by himself. That's four cars in a row that have gone off. Klein tries to get spun back around, hits Gerald Campbell. Campbell does just about sneak in front of Michael Hossack. But that's absolutely bizarre. We've seen four cars in a row in tandem all go off at the same corner in pretty much the same exact way. That was uh, quite the spectacle to watch, as already Tyler Foti has closed the gap. We see Chad Frankenfield on pit road. We see Seth Rawls on pit road. Chase Cabry, Tyler Foti, the battle for the lead about to kick off. Yeah, three tenths of a second between these two. Tyler Foti has got some red hot pace at the minute. We saw Foti diving down the inside there. Almost Got a nose in there on the 39, but to no avail on this particular occasion coming down into the first little snake section there. So a quick right, left, right, left in that first part of the straight. Tyler thought he was going to have to slip stream about a quarter of a second between these two before they go down to our left, a right, and then they're going to come towards the south bend before hitting the oak tree section. And then they're going to hit the longest straight on the entire circuit. You see the oak tree complex just in the distance there. In that camera shot, they come down the hill for the south bend. It's turns 11 and 12 now. Chase Cabry half a second ahead of his adversary. Tyler Foti. Foti looks to get the run off with the fresher tyres. You see the gap coming down. All the while, a few hundredths of a second at a time. But he won't be quite close enough to get a move done. Into the roller coaster section. We'll see how long Chase Cabry can hold on to this lead. Down the back stretch. Headed towards the roller coaster. Chase Cabry is still in front. How much longer can he hold off Tyler Foti? We will see. Obviously, Foti has closed up that gap significantly. What is. 
What has happened here with Ch He is still on pit road. Is that damage on the 15? He pitted a little while ago, I believe. He is... I think he's 19. retiring. He scored 19th there on the thicker of your left-hand side oh, he there. He did have an oh. incident. And they're, they're fighting for the lead in turn one there. Tyler Foti got to the outside there of Chase Cabry, who went defensive into the horseshoe, but Foti hangs it around the outside there through the horseshoe. He's going to have the inside oh, for turn three. It. And Cabry's going to have to let him have it. He has to relinquish the lead for the time being. So Tyler Foti retakes the race lead with 13 laps to go. But we'll see if Cabry has anything for him later in the stint. We saw how quickly Chase Cabry was able to close back up to the 40 in those later runs around lap 7 to 15 there, the end of that first stint there that started the race. Tyler Foti, though, already breaking off to a big gap there, three quarters of a second between those two. Tyler Foti, a new race leader. All right, we're going to get a look here. This is what happened to Chad Frankenfield. Unfortunately, the reason he got to pit road is because he towed there. We're going to see right here, gets upset on the curbs, noses into the tire barriers, engine smoke. Nothing good happened there for Chad Frankenfield. Yeah, so I was right. That was front end damage then. Let's be quite major there on the 15. That is race ending stuff you see on the ticker there. Just for a split second, he's still on pit road now. Scored 25th. You see there just in front of Jake Scarborough, who's also on pit road, as well as David Carpenter. Everyone below them is out of the running as of right now. But leading the running is the 40 of Tyler Foti. As he comes through the hog pen, he'll come to 12 laps to go at the stripe. We're looking at Caleb Pacuma in the pit lane here. Do he's just exiting or what's happened there to they the were 59. talking about giving him some penalty for something coming into the pits oh. he does. Cabri on his inside this might be an unsafe entry penalty for the 59 he wanted to come into the pits but Cole Cabri was there on his on driver's right very yeah. interesting he might have got a unsafe entry penalty there well uh uh, Dave, this might be a good chance to knock out our break so, and then come back for the final 10 laps or so of this one. All right. We'll be right back. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head-to-head -head against other drivers chosen by skill-based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. Welcome back here to Virginia International Raceway as you see the battle for the third shaping up. Cole Cabry in the 98, Hunter Smith in the four. Hunter Smith's got to get by him here in the horseshoe. Yeah, Hunter Smith took a big dive there into turn one. You saw the right front lock up there on the number four. 98 had to relinquish that final podium position, but Cole Cabry, already a Grand National Series race winner, will not let him have it easy there that speed factor stable has been incredibly fast since their debut in the elite racing league and Cole Cabri has to fight one of the biggest road course ringers in elite Hunter Smith 
known specialist on the road course side of things, so Cole Cabry is not going to have an easy time getting back past that number four as he slots himself into position number three here. Dave, before we get back into the flow of this for the final 10 laps or so, would you like to uh, do our sponsor reads for the Sure evening? can. I can do that. Uh, we are in the Stay Tuned Sports podcast truck series. Stay Tuned Sports was started in 2016 by two friends, even though hating each other's teams, with the purpose of producing a sports show like no other. They wanted to create a show that would cover all major sports with a little bit of comedy mixed in. Stay Tuned Sports releases weekly episodes covering the NFL and NHL, Major League Baseball, and even some college football. So if you're looking for some hot takes mixed in with some good ball busting, then this is the show for you. Stay Tuned Sports, your home for sports nonsense. Premier sponsors for the Elite Racing League is Blue Egg Marketing. Blue Egg is the marketing department for small businesses. Small business owners, Blue Egg is your biggest fan. Constraints catalyze creativity. We help businesses punch above their weight class. And finally, Worldwide Technology Raceway. Worldwide Technology Raceway is a motorsport racing facility in Madison, Illinois, just east of St. Louis, Missouri. It features a 1.25-mile NASCAR Cup Series oval, also hosts the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series and the NTT IndyCar Series. It has a two-mile infield road course used by Trans Am, SECA, and Porsche Club of America, a quarter-mile NHRA drag strip that hosts the Midwest Nationals event, and the Cartplex, a state-of-the-art karting facility. Those are our sponsors for tonight, gentlemen. I believe right as soon as you wrapped up your read, we had a spin with the double zero of Gerald Campbell. If we, we're, if I can't miss that one, uh, I figured you'd want to check that out. Let's yeah, I've see just here. seen him move the pump here. It's well, in Norgard is right on his back end. They're coming into the roller coaster. Oh, he just drops it on the entry there. Leighton Norgard looks to just squeak past the double zero there. Does he save it? Mostly. Not quite. I don't know. Half spin. Yeah, it didn't make it all the way off the racetrack. It did go pretty much oh, a Oh, look at him. He keeps going. That's such yeah. a dangerous place to be stopped. That is precarious. I see why he wanted to just get off the track. I was yeah. getting clattered there. That's totally blind coming over that crest. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, William. Normally, you like a guy in that situation to hold the brakes and be predictable, but there's nothing predictable about being in a blind spot over that hill. So, Gerald probably making the right call. I'm probably knew other than, uh, I've already forgotten who was behind Norgard. Not a lot of traffic behind him. Probably knew he was clear out back anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. Get off the racetrack in that situation. <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely probably the worst place to be stopped on the entire circuit. Just off the roller coaster, they're going to come with a full head of steam after hitting their top speed at the end of that straight, and it's completely oh. a blind crest. Right hander is a big angle here. Seth Prawls blowing past the lap car, I believe that was of Mitchevere. And it's Dylan of it going down the inside of the lap car. Raymond Hanneman, he's got Seth Rawls right behind him. So yeah, to, to clean that up, the 57 and the 10 is a battle for six. They've made their way through some lap traffic, but that is a battle for a position inside the top 10 between the 57 of Dylan Javier and the 10 of Seth Rawls. Yeah, Seth Rawls applying the pressure to the back of the 57 of Dylan Javier as they work their way through the little slithery snake for the ninth to last time as they've just hit nine to go race leader Tyler Foti still quite a ways out in front of Chase Carey to get 1.6 seconds but Dylan Javier and Seth Rawls just separated by a few tenths as they see the battle for 17th just behind them between Mitch Javier and Daytona winner Raymond Hanneman they've got Michael Klein just in front of them hopefully they can navigate around Michael fairly quickly through the oak tree section Michael gets oh, smashed out of the way gone. onto the grass but I think they've done a decent job of navigating past it. Klein gets back onto the track safely with Dylan Havir and Jesse Racimus behind him. But the battle for six still heating up. This is where you see some of those strategies starting to shake out. Some of the fresher tires drawing in other competitors. As uh, these two drivers making their way through the roller coaster. 
this battle for six continuing on. Mitch Havir in the 57, Seth Rawls in the 10, through Hog Pen towards the start finish line. About four tenths of a second separating these two, so Seth Rawls won't quite have the ability to go for a move down the inside of the horseshoe on this particular occasion. He does get quite close though, is he very brave on the brakes there from the driver of the 10 there for Shift Esports. So Seth Rawls definitely showing his hand right now, showing some good pace there in P7, just behind Dylan Havir in the 6th position, part of that Lake Norman Motorsports stable there, led by Tyler Vogt, who's currently leading this race still by about 1.6 seconds over Chase Gabriel, so that gap looking to stabilize for the time being. But Seth Rawls not letting Dylan have it easy. Still just a few tenths between those drivers, looking to kind of trade split time for the time being. The gap kind of stable at half a second. Oh, here we got side by side. That is for fourth. Richie Hearn, Cole Cabry. A little bit of a lockup there from the 98. Richie Hearn able to get by and into the fourth spot. Yeah, I think we saw a little mistake there out of Cole Cabry coming out of the south bend there towards Oak Tree. And I think just trying to salvage it and keep on the inside there of oh, Richie Hearn, but to no avail, Cole Cabry has the little excursion through the dirt. It's down to fifth. Richie Hearn in the 4D race where the summer 73 Toyota is up to P4. So a solid run there for the former IndyCar driver. Looking back now again, that battle for six with Mitch Havir and Seth Rawls. Continuing on. I am seeing, that is Cole Cabry on your scoring pylon. He is headed down pit road. You can see him on the screen now off to the right side. He has come to a complete stop Stopped. on pit road. I think he's just towed it, yeah. He's immediately done to 16th on the... Uh scoring tower. I don't think he was running for any points. I think he's just called it a night with seven to go. Interesting. He was running fifth. He was doing well. But that does promote uh, Dylan Haver and Seth Rawls of a play, so maybe a little bit more to play for as there is playoff connotations in that particular scrap. Dylan Haver in the playoffs but not locked in. Seth Rawls still looking to get his way into that top 14 with just three rounds to go, so every point means Everything for this slot is see Cole K. Bristol stationary in his pit stall there in the 98 speed factor forward there. He is down to 21st, you see on the scoring pile on, but for first and second, the gap closes just a little bit. Chase Cabry now 1.2 seconds behind Tyler Foti there in the number 40. You see them come over the crest down into the trough there before the roller coaster. Big breaking zone, we'll see. If Cabri does look to be a little bit braver on the brakes, a couple tenths there. Down to just one second through the hog pen we go now. The grip just starting to come back to Chase Cabri. Looks to be a little bit kinder to his tyres that allows him to come back later in these stints. Seven laps to go here. Crossing the start finish line, Tyler Foti leading the way. Chase Cabry about a second back there. Trying to see if he can form a late charge here. Looks to be doing a good job at it. Now just nine tenths of a second between those two. So the gap closing all the time there for every turn. It seems like Cabry just has a little bit more grip, a little bit more purchase from his good gear tires than Tyler Foti does as he heads through the left hook now. Turns four and four right before they head down into the little slippery snake again. Six laps to go, so it's crunch time now for Chase Cabry. If he wants to get a move done, he has to get it done soon. You see Michael Harsak there just ahead of him. That's the last lead lap car. He's 14th, about almost two minutes behind the leaders, Tyler Foti and Chase Cabry, but we'll see how much of an obstruction Harsak is for these two. Whether he wants to Maybe pledge allegiance to one of these guys, whether he wants to get out of the way as he does go into Oak Tree, gets out of Tyler Foti's way, gets out of Chase Cabe's way, so nice courtesy there from the 24 to keep that battle alive. Yeah, Hasek definitely was communicating on the way up to Oak Tree to cede the track position to the 40 and the 
39 and not interfere with the lead battle. Next, you see they'll be coming up on Sam Boutwell in the 47 to put him a second lap down. And he has gone off the track. That's a tough spot because they're going to switch back here. Oh, he's he has stayed all the way off the track. He is... We'll do some Dakar rally, I think. He is headed but to South Austin. maybe. Yeah, some extreme e-race in there from Sam Batwell. I wonder if that's incurred a slowdown panic. He did a lot of uh, rallying there. He's now got Michael Harsak there up his inside, but that's not for position. Harsak a lap ahead of Sam Batwell. We see Harsak just overshot the roller coaster, and I think in the interest of staying out of the way of Tyler Foti and Jace Cabri, just decided to straight line the rest of the hog pen as well. Come back on like nothing ever happened. Imagine being the corner worker there and seeing the <laughs> truck go behind you. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I would be rather concerned if I had a V8 screaming behind me when I see the corner in front of me. I'd be a bit scared, personally. Nevertheless, the lead battle continues on. Five laps to go. Chase Cabri has closed up a little bit, down to about three quarters of a second here as they make their way back up the hill. Yeah, the gap looks to still be closing. Chase Cabri has some brilliant pace in that Ford at this current moment in time. You see for the technical parts of the track, the high speed sections, you see that's really where that truck shines down to just over half a second out. They go into Oak Tree. You see the lap times on the bottom of your screen there. Two and a half tenths there. The deficit in pace between those two in the favor of Chase Cabri. They get a fairly even run. Out of the second part of Oak Tree, Chase Cabri though does have the slipstream that allows them to gain a few hundredths of a second. Going into the roller coaster section, six tenths of a second the gap as they come over the crest down into the trough. Five laps to go, that'll be four at the stripe as they head into the roller coaster. Cabri looks to be about even on the brakes compared to Tyler Foti there. Gets a decent run off. Still, the gap stabilizing, but now you see this is where Chase Cabri shines again through the technical parts. He has more grip. In those good years, it's enough four tenths of a second. He's got a brilliant run through the last part of the hog pen. And he's got a decent slipstream coming into the horseshoe to close that gap even more. Four laps to go now, but that was really heating up for the lead. Looking on board from Chase Cabri, just four tenths of a second in front of him, the leader Tyler Foti as they head down towards the horseshoe. Look how much he closes the gap under braking there. Yeah, he's trying to put some pressure on Tyler Foti, maybe trying to force him into a mistake, trying to intimidate. Tyler Foti, not easily done, I can tell you as a seven-time champion in the series, Tyler Foti is not so easily intimidated. I see Chase Cabri really trying to put the pressure on the 40. They'll come to three laps to go and they hit the strap in about a minute and a half's time. So time is taken for Chase Cabri to get that move done, but just three tenths of a second between them now. So the opportunities are really going to start presenting themselves to the 39. As the cliche goes in motorsports, it's one thing to catch a guy, it's another guy to pass him. Especially true on this tight road course, but definitely Chase Cabri is there. Tyler Foti knows he's there. Who's going to execute over these final three and a half laps as they make their way through Oak Tree, heading back towards the back stretch, nose to tail? It's a decent run out of the corner again for Chase Cabri. He's about even. Well, if Tyler Foote, I think Tyler Foote just gets up through the gears a little bit better, you see the gap eats out just a little bit, still less than three tenths of a second there. Has come over the hill, down the valley, into the roller coaster again. They've got Jeff Green just in front of them. See Chase Cabri has a little bit of a look, see there, into the right hand of there, the first part of the roller coaster. Now through the hog pen, we've seen him close the gap there before, and he's going to do it again, just less than two tenths of a second. Now he's right all over the back. Of Tyler Foote, he's got to try and keep his foot in it now to get a good run. Jeff Green pulls over to let these two go past. Brilliant to see the courtesy there as Jeff Green, the latest truck to go one lap down in 13th an hour. These guys have lapped everyone up to 12th. It's been a dominant display from these two as both of them have cleared the rest of the field by almost 20 seconds there with Hunter Smith 19.3 seconds adrift of Tyler Foote there on the ticker on the left hand side but as they head through the first sector now three laps to go at the stripes the time is ticking chase cabri though just less than two tenths of a second away from tyler Foley. 
Fody trying to take these defensive lines, keep Chase Cabry behind him. So far it's working, but now headed up the snake here. Fody still in front, but Chase Cabry, every chance he gets, he's showing a different direction with the nose of that Ford, keeping Fody on his toes. Now they're headed up towards South Bend, up towards Oak Tree. H here he comes. He's got a brilliant run there into the South Bend. They almost make contact there. Tyler Fody's now going to have to try and maybe get defensive into Oak Tree there. Chase Cabry might try and move him. He does get to the inside into the second part of Oak Tree. Fody gives him the space there, but he might have the run coming off of Oak Tree. He does, so still the gap. Three tenths of a second there. I think Fody's going to have to start channeling, channeling his inner Fernando Alonso there. Maybe start sacrificing his entry and just get super, super defensive. Well, you know how good Tyler Fody is at protecting Lee's. He's won a million times on the road courses, and he's a 19-time winner in the Stage 2 Sports Truck Series. But Chase Cabry is hungrier than ever to try and take that race lead away from the seven-time champion. And see, he gets super close there. Maybe we might start seeing some bump and running in these last two laps as they come out of the hog pen. Coming to the line for two laps to go. Tyler Fody still in front. Chase Cabry all over Fody as they battle for the win here in the Virginia Road Course Challenge. Fody again. I think you guys see him, like you say, take that defensive line here into the horseshoe. A little bit kind of closes off Chase Cabry here as they make their way out of turn one and start the penultimate lap here at Virginia. Yeah, we saw Tyler Foti about half a truck quip to the right on entry, then further to the right than Chase Cabry. And we're seeing again some more defensive lines there. He's placing that truck absolutely inch perfectly to just cut off the line that Chase Cabry wants to take there as we're coming out onto the snake. This is a part of the track where Chase Cabry's excel, but Tyler Foti does a brilliant job at getting the exit that he needed to really eke out the gap there. So now half a second between Tyler Foti and Chase Cabry, and that's going to give Foti a little bit of a breathing room to get that consistency back, make sure that he's got his rhythm absolutely spot on because Chase Cabry absolutely has the pace on slightly fresher tyres over Tyler Foti there. Chase Cabry's done a brilliant job of taking care of those good years after pulling the undercut so his tyres are slightly older but they look to be just a little bit fresher there for the 39. Back down the hill, down the back straightaway, head towards the roller coaster. Again, Fody has really benefited from that strong run out of the left hook into the snake. But once again, he's going to have to be on the defensive, going into the roller coaster, down the hill, through this left-hander, Man, he's doing a pretty good job of keeping the truck planted, not letting Chase Cabry close in. This time, it'll be the white flag in the air. Tyler Fody leading with one lap to go here at Virginia International Raceway. We saw just coming out the hog pen there. Chase Cabry just got a little snap of over, so that's lost him a few hundredths of a second. The white flag is out, so we will end under green flag conditions. Chase Cabry really... Hasn't got a lot of time now to get that move done. You see, he's pulling out all the stops to try and find a gap there. Either to the left or the right of Tyler Foti. About half a second, the gap. Tyler Foti's been super smooth, despite the pressure from Chase Cabry. And maybe Cabry's tries just getting a little bit hot there under the 39. But the gap still just three tenths of a second. So Tyler Foti has to really keep his cool now. Coming into the snake here, we'll see how fast Chase Cabry is. He managed to get a much better run through there. He's a couple of cents closer than he was last time around, but not close enough to quite make a move for this first part of the straight. Not close enough. Definitely better for Chase Cabry as they make their way towards South Bend. He closes up massively here turn, turn, turn 9 and 10. Now heading towards Oak Tree. Defensive line for Fody. Cabry's got to try to stick it around the outside. Can he make it work? If he can, he might get a run down the backstretch. Oh! I don't know if there was contact or not. It couldn't have been any closer. Tyler Fody gets back in front. Yeah, and Cabry just in the straight line there, just lost a little bit of grip there to try to get back in the slipstream. The truck just stepped out on him a little bit. Is he going to go for an audacious lunge here? Into the roller coaster section, just a tenth and a half between them. Will he put the bumper to the 40? Have a look through the right-hander. 
He elects not to through the hog pen. It's his last chance to get a move done. He has to really be audacious. He has to be aggressive here. The last quarter of a second, see Caleb Bakuma there. Off the track in the oh. background. But through his last corner, Capri loses it. And I think that's all she wrote for Tyler Foti. Tyler Foti, no pressure for at least the final straightaway. He's going to get to the checkered flag and win the Virginia Road Course Challenge ahead of Chase Cabry. What a battle over those closing laps. Ultimately, Tyler Foti picking up the win here in the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series at Virginia. It's the big 2-0 in the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series for Tyler Foti. It's his 20th win. A milestone there for the seven-time champion. He's absolutely deserved it. Came under immense pressure there from Chase Cabry, culminating in that awesome last lap battle there, which almost saw Chase Cabry take the lead at the death. But Tyler Foti held on, despite the pace differential, to take the checkered flag here to sweep the road courses here in the Truck Series this season. Sweeps the road courses. Third win of the season in the Truck Series for Tyler Foti. Third career win on a road course in the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series, also won on the road course at Daytona back in the 2023A season. Where? Shortcutting. I was about oh, to say, he's he's his... about to fail, I think, through that corner, the name that yeah, we can't yeah. here. I mean, we can. You can say anything once. That's true, you can't say anything once. Yeah, Tyler Foti not interested in the full victory lap, understandably. Yeah, I mean, the pace lap was about an hour long, so I don't blame him. I'd want to get back to the front street, do my burnouts immediately, if I were Foti. He's already through the roller coaster. Purple in all sectors. I still can't show you the results yet, because not everybody's finished. Well, there, and I think there's your finisher right there, I believe, which Jaden receives. I mean, Tyler did cut about half a track, so there could still be some finish behind him. So, hopefully not. Hopefully no one plows into him while he's doing his victory donuts. Well-deserved donuts, though, for the 40 truck there. 20th win all time in the truck series. And it's a well-deserved one. Didn't have it easy there, but for a total of 72 career wins now in the Elite Racing League. It adds to an immense tally there that's thoroughly, thoroughly well-deserved as he does his burnouts on the front straight. Now I think I can get you the... Now we have results? Now we have Question results. Mark. We are. There they are. Tyler Foti, your winner. Chase Cabry in second. Hunter Smith, third. Richie Hearn coming home fourth. Dylan Havir, fifth. Seth Rawls, sixth. Jesse Racimus, seventh. Kevin Hibbs, eighth. Leighton Norgard, ninth. Gerald Campbell rounding out the top ten. Joe Francis, last vehicle on the lead lap. And eleventh, Jeff Green finishing twelfth. Michael Hossack, thirteenth. Raymond Hanneman, fourteenth. Mitch Havir, fifteenth. Cody McCorkle, sixteenth. Andrew Hardcastle, 17th. Jaden Racimus coming home in the 18th position. Caleb Kumer, 19th. Sam Boutwell, 20th. Michael Klein, 21st. Dusty Dewar, 22nd. Cole Cabry, 23rd. Matt Telder, 24th. Chad Frankenfield, 25th. Jake Scarborough, 26th. Dave Carpenter, 27th. Thomas Coonan, 28th. Andrew Rucker, 29th. And Josh Freed rounding out the field. All right, Dave, who are we going to talk to first? How about third place? I'm good with that. Third place tonight here in the Virginia Road Course Challenge, Hunter Smith in the number four out of Little, Little Eagle Racing. Hunter, uh, always a unique challenge when we go to these, for lack of a better description, non-NASCAR road courses here in the NASCAR series, like the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series. 
how much familiarity i know you have a little bit broader racing portfolio than some of these guys how much familiarity do you have with this track coming into the night quite a bit uh never in a stock car though that was brand new yeah it's kind of a bad habit but i race anything and everything doesn't mean i necessarily win but um yeah, this track I actually have quite a bit of familiarity in from running a lot of sports cars, and especially the GT4s, which is actually kind of similar to these, where you just got to just be patient and let the car roll and slow on the throttle. Uh, it's a weird track, because first sector is super slow. You're not on the gas at all. Second se sector, going across the S's, you're just hustling it through. And the final sector, you're just, again, just slogging it up through it until you can finally get on the gas so vr is a good track though it's good fun in stock car that patience definitely seemed to pay off for you qualified six had you know good speed but really that patience and just methodically working your way up into the conversation up into this podium finish while other guys had struggles over the course of the evening it really seemed to pay off for you yeah, that was the whole game plan. I ran that race like an oval. Easy on the tires, get it in, don't oversteer it. Uh, and I got lucky because Richie and uh, Chad in front of me, and Cole, honestly, those three were kind of getting after quite a bit. And Chad finally burnt his tires up, and I could tell. So in that final corner, I knew if I, as long as I got the exit right on him, I'd be able to get a good run, get in the get in the turn one and block him out, which I did. Did hit him a little bit, but, you know, it's, it's all right. He'll get over it. <laughs> I'm, I am sure he will. Uh, before we let you go, Hunter, who do you have to thank on this third place run? Well, my team, we accidentally put the wrong stickers on the front of it. So uh, it's supposed to be a Ford. Accidentally ran a Chevy. Don't tell anybody. Uh, Little Eagle Racing, of course, all the support that we get from those guys that we have. And then, of course, uh, Warrior HP is always on the side of the car. So, yeah, thank you, guys. All right. Thank you. Congratulations, Hunter. We will see you in one week's time. Sounds good. So with that, we now go to our second place finisher, Chase Cabry. Chase, right there at the end, you had the chance to battle with Tyler Fody for the win. What did you need there in the closing laps to finish that one spot better? Oh, man, that was a hell of a race. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I was excited doing it. Uh, so I hope we put on a show because... Uh, yeah, Tyler's always raced me super clean, um, and, uh, you know, I feel like I've done the same back to him. I, you know, gave him a little shot here and there um, towards the end of that race, but it's uh, it's super tough to pass here. Like, the passing zones are far and few in between. If you don't get a, a good run off the final corner, passing into one is, you know, you don't have a shot, um, and, and it's really tough. Like, it's, it's tough to find an area to, you know, try to outbreak someone, so... Um, yeah, it made it hard to try to pass. Um, you know, I felt like at the end I was I was a little bit better than he was, um, just on tire wise. But uh, yeah, it just it's so hard to find a place to to actually make the move and make it stick. You mentioned kind of being in a better spot tire wise at the end. We kind of noted that William and I, because obviously you did the undercut to get in front of Tyler Fody. He gets back around you, but then you didn't go away. You were able to close back in on him. Uh, what did it take as far as that tire management to put yourself in position to close that gap and, and challenge again there at the end as far as working with the tires? Yeah, so early in the race, I had I was battling with him and I got a slowdown penalty. And so I had to, you know, give up time. And then luckily he got held up with some lappers and that got me back to him. And then trying to battle him again, I got another slowdown in the same corner. Um, and, and so I thought to myself, if I could pit here um, and I could get in front of him. When I came out of pits, I just went there. I was only two seconds back. So I knew if I could just make up two, two seconds within, you know, a lap or two that I would jump in front of him. And so my hope was to try to get in front of him and make him push harder than he wanted to um, without tearing my tires up. So then, you know, he came out of pits and he, and he starts, you know, trying to pressure me, pressure me. Um, eventually he gets in front of me and it just took discipline to kind of let him run away for a little bit and, and try to conserve tire. I knew straight up speed, we were pretty similar. Um, so I knew I had to do something to, to try to beat him. And um, I think I played the right strategy. I just couldn't get it done in the end. He drove a great race um hands down uh top to bottom he he didn't make a single mistake so um i think that was the biggest difference and uh you know hats off to him 
Before we let you go, Chase, who do you have to thank on this runner-up finish tonight? Uh, just all the Speed Factor guys. Uh, sucks my brother. Uh, he was really good. Um, I felt like towards the end of that first run before we all pit, he was catching me, and then he drove off course, and then pit, and drove off course again, and then drove off course again. And So I wish he could have been up here to battle with us. Um, but, yeah, nonetheless, just a, a good race overall. All right. Thank you, Chase. Congratulations, and we'll see you next week at Eldora. See you. And with that, we'll talk to our winner now, Tyler Fody, picking up the win here at Virginia. And Tyler, uh, you had to work for it, buddy, there at the end. Talk us through that battle with Chase at the finish for your perspective. Yeah, that was that was way more than I wanted to. Um, yeah, just uh, really wore out after that one. Um, props to Chase. Um, he was saving tire a lot, a lot better. Uh, than I was. I could not figure it out with the rear tires there going. Um, yeah, I uh, I thought, you know, I'll go a couple laps longer than him, and for sure, like, surely he won't be able to, uh, to hang with me after that, and um, sure enough, same thing happened. He was all over me at the end of that run. Um, yeah, just uh, a lot of mirror driving and uh, trying to protect the spot there. Um, yeah. Props to him, though. It was a fun race. How challenging was that mentally? I mean, obviously, you know how hard it is to pass here and what it took to get around him, even with the fresher tires earlier in the run. But by the same token, what did it take, especially in that first sector, to be able to place your truck exactly where it needed to be to hold him off? Yeah, that was uh, this. This track is super tricky and really just like one line all the way around um and on top of that the trucks are so tall in the back end that you like it's hard to follow people um especially through that first sector uh specifically the s's um the couple times i was behind him through that cycle like you almost have to back off a little bit just to see the, the corners coming up um so i knew that and uh yeah just kind of trying to back up the entries a little bit, let him get up to me and then just fire off the corner. Um, a little bit of that and uh, just kind of being defensive, trying to get him on the, the bad side of the track for the corners was uh, pretty crucial. Um, but yeah, it definitely kept me on my toes. Um, I was sweating bullets there um, and just doing a lot of mirror driving. So, but uh, just happy to be, to bring it home. All right. Before we let you go, Tyler, who do you have to think on the win tonight? Yeah, just all the Lake Norman guys. Um, big shout out to Dylan uh, Haver, uh, 11th to 5th. It's pretty awesome. I um, think that might be his first top five in trucks. So really cool to see that. Um, shout out to uh, Mitch as well, getting a top 15 there. Um, real unfortunate circumstances with uh, Caleb. I don't know if the broadcast caught it, but uh, just kind of got taken out there by Joe Francis at the end. So. That was unfortunate, um, but the speed is all there, so it's all you can really ask for. Um, just keep just keep showing up and getting these results with these guys, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully hopefully they can have a solid uh, playoff run. Um, also, shout out to JD Designs for painting all these cars. Um, Jonathan Cutlip does a great job about that, so shout out to him, um, and shout out to you guys, too. All right, Tyler, congratulations on the win, and... Uh... We'll see you next week at Eldora. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right. That is Tyler Fody, your winner tonight. And that concludes the interview segment of tonight's broadcast. William, any closing thoughts before we sign off for the evening? Yeah, I mean, we've gone kind of two for two on bangers um, on the road course side of things in the truck series this season. We had a barn burner finish at... Um, Steve Bring, which ended up with Tyler Foti absolutely walking away with it about 20 seconds. I think the gap was not quite 20 seconds. Um, the gap between uh Foti and Cabri at the line just seven tenths, but I think even that is a bit um kind of unrepresentative um of the battle that they had. I mean, there were a few hundreds apart at points, you know, when Chase went for that dive around the outside into Oak Tree, so it was awesome to watch. And there were battles all throughout the field that were 
cool to watch. I don't think 14K we really got as much screen time as one might initially expect seeing the kind of intervals um, on your screen there. It was awesome to watch all the strategy unfold as well, so undercuts, overcuts. So, yeah, it was an awesome one. I know these, again, for lack of a better term, non-NASCAR road courses can sometimes be unpopular with the competitors, but uh, I'm with you. There's no doubt, both between these two races and the truck series and the Grand National Race at Zandvoort, it has put on three incredible races this season. Uh, Another great one tonight, we saw the battle to the finish between Tyler Fody and Chase Cabry. Just incredible incredible racing tonight again we will see you next week here on the dirt at eldora tomorrow night grand national series as you can see on the left of the screen the lady in black the track too tough to tame darlington raceway tuesday night season finale for the pit series at worldwide technology raceway and then the belly up sports cup series uh going 400 miles at daytona this week week off for the warriors for peace indycar series so enjoy your freedom on thursday night otherwise we'll see you again next week right here for that eldora dirt race until then for dave huckleberry william white i'm zach evans thanks for tuning in and we will see you in one week good night